dogma morality is always on a path of development, but always developing in the same direction. Uh, he cited St. Vincent of Larens as saying that tr the true doctrine in order to move forward to develop must not be still. It develops. It is consolidated over time. It expands and consolidates. It becomes always more solid, but always progressing. That is why the duty of theologians is research theological reflection. You cannot do theology with a no in front of it. Then it is up to the magisterium to say, no, you've gone too far, come back. But theological development must be open. That's what theologians are for. And the magisterium must help to understand the limits. Close quote. That's His Holiness Pope Francis. Now, what's interesting is, uh, as of recently, the last month or so, the Pontifical Academy for Life uh, in uh, the JP2 Pontifical Academy, at least some members of it have been espousing an idea of overturning Humani Vitae and allowing contraception to become, uh, I guess, okay. Uh, it's a, there's a debate on this. So can you give us some insight from your perspective, Bishop Joseph Strickland? Well, yes, thanks, Joe. Um, I think what it comes down to really simply is unchangeable truth. And one of the things, one word that I caught in, I believe what you were quoting from Pope Francis that I would totally agree, and it's the word solid. Um, the truth is solid. It is not uh, fully known. It is a mystery that to say that we fully know God is, is simply not understanding the great mystery of God. That is really more in the Greek uh, in sense of mysterion, just deeper truth than we can fathom. It's not the idea of like a you know, it's sort of a murder mystery that we would have in common language and the way we understand mystery. It's not a puzzle that is uh, kind of to be figured out, but it's just a deep truth that really, I think what we have to acknowledge is always beyond us. And one thing that I'm learning as I get older um, is that we always have to have the perspective of history when we're looking at solid truth, that at unchangeable truth in our lives. And it's interesting that in my lifetime, um, Humanae Vitae, the whole question of the sanctity of life and certainly contraception interfering with the conception of new life, all of those questions have been very present in the world in the past you know, just about 100 years, I guess, since they first really begin, began developing ways to contracept, to intercept or interfere, uh, you might say, with the natural processes. Certainly, um, ways of avoiding pregnancy from uh, the marital act have, through the ages, there have been, you know, ways that they've, that people have tried to do that, not accepting um, the, the plan of God, and that's not a new thing in humanity, but I think it is in our time this question of the sanctity of life and the who is the author of life, all of those questions whirl around. And thankfully, with Humanae Vitae, which was very controversial in that time, I mean, I was just a kid and only learned of it later, but as I've talked to my parents and my older brothers and sisters even, that was really a headline similar to what we see in the world these days with questions. And, of course, it was in the context of the immediately post-Vatican II church, and a lot of questions were whirling around. But Pope Paul VI, to the surprise of many, now St. Paul VI, um, Many were surprised that he came down the way he did with Humanae Vitae. And I think that's a sign that the Holy Spirit um, guided the Pope, as we know that it is the promise of Christ for the Church, that the Church and the Pope will be guided by the Holy Spirit. Um, that, I think, is something that we need to be very clear on. And just simply to acknowledge that truth doesn't change— Certainly, it develops. We develop our understanding of truth. God is truth. God is love. God is everlasting, eternal truth. Um, and I think that 
with questions like this, at some point, we just have to acknowledge we're not God. We don't, in this life, understand all things, but we trust what God has revealed to us. And I think that any who are maybe hoping that the church will change her teaching, which she can't really, but I would really uh, look back to what Paul the Sixth said. What he predicted, if people don't embrace the truth that Humanae Vitae proclaimed, which the culture hasn't, and many in the church have it. In that time, many in the church didn't accept what Humanae Vitae said. And we basically have the world that Paul the VI uh, prophesied with a denigration of women and family and children and, and all the things that have unraveled in our society since um, Humanae Vitae was pretty much rejected by too many. And I have to admit, as a younger priest, it was not a question that I was really focused on or encouraged to focus on. It's only been in later years that I've seen it as a vital question that thankfully was answered correctly in Humanae Vitae. And we just have to keep reinforcing that, whatever the pushback of the culture wanting us to relax it so that they can do what they're already doing with a, with a clean conscience. Is this an issue that you think is going to further divide the church? I mean, it's, it seems like uh, there are a few issues like that in our, in our day, in our time. And uh, are bishops lining up on one side or the other on this issue already? Well, um, I would say probably uh, there are, well, you don't, hear a lot about Humanae Vitae. You don't hear a lot of or read a lot about um, contraception. And uh, just recently, because of the anniversary of Humanae Vitae, we heard a bit more and the, the questions about natural family planning and is that just Catholic contraception, all of those questions. I think like with most things, we just have to acknowledge, I mean, if you did a survey of the bishops of the world or the bishops of the U.S., you are going to get some division there. Um, I think it is one of the questions where some disagree, as happened when Humanae Vitae was issued. But I think in our time, we have to see very clearly to look to the truth that the Church has proclaimed. We've just celebrated the Assumption of the Immaculate Virgin Mary. That is something that the church has held for true for many centuries. And with mm. uh, Paul, uh, Pope Pius XII, it became promulgated as a basic dogma of our faith, the Assumption of Mary. About Humanae Vitae and uh, contraception again, you know, in his 1968 encyclical Humanae Vitae, St. Paul VI wrote that any action which either before, at the moment of, or after <clears throat> sexual intercourse is specifically intent that is specifically intended to prevent procreation, whether as an end or as a means, is excluded as an unlawful means of birth control. And what's interesting is there seems to be a debate about whether or not uh, Pope St. Paul VI intended this to be infallibly declared. Uh, they're arguing that, no, it didn't. It was just mere opinion or suggestion. And yet I'm reading from an article out of the National Catholic Register, and there's this section here by Dominican Father Thomas Petrie, president of the Dominican House of Studies in Washington, D.C., noted that even critics of the teaching on contraception have, quote, acknowledged that this was always the Church's teaching. Close quote. And that nowhere in the church's teaching has there been permissiveness of any form of contraception. Father Petrie goes on to say it's part of the ordinary universal magisterium of the church. So, Bishop Strickland, um, there's a debate here. Did Paul VI declare this, you know, for, from his authority as the pope uh, of the church? Or is this his, just his mere opinion and we can take it or leave it? Uh, there seems to be a, a debate. This seems to be the issue that those that would want contraception in the church, this is their, this is their get out of jail free card, it seems. What say you, Bishop Strickland? Well, I think the uh, Dominican priest that you quote uh, really says it correctly. And we have to uh, acknowledge that the, the truth remains 
we understand it more clearly and more deeply, as Pope Francis indicated in that quote, that it, it goes always in the same direction of deeper into the truth. And what uh, Paul the, Pope Paul VI did in proclaiming Humanae Vitae, I really go back to what Pius XII did with proclaiming the Assumption of Mary. It wasn't changing anything. It wasn't anything really new. It was reiterating and emphasizing the solid and stable tradition in the teaching of the Church in both instances. And so, as the Dominican priest said, the, the Church has always taught that interfering in whatever ways. Like I said, before the pill, people were finding ways in medieval times. I mean, humanity has looked for ways to avoid consequences and, and all kinds of things. And certainly, contraception, there have been various efforts, some, some old wives' uh, tales or remedies that, that would be used. So there's been an attempt to get around the consequences of when a man and woman come together in that intimate embrace. Um, but the church has always said, no, that is not, that's contrary to what God is planning. And that's where we get off track. Uh, so it's not, Humanae Vitae wasn't just merely the opinion of one pope. And we have to be careful with that idea at any time. I mean, uh, the, the teachings of the Pope should be echoing the, the deposit of faith, uh, echoing what the apostles taught and all through the ages. And that's what um, Humanae Vitae did. It, it, the question came up because of the pill and new technologies, new abilities. I mean, there are all kinds of ways that contraception is practiced now, and that's what Paul VI was addressing in our modern world but it wasn't uh, a change of teaching, and it wasn't a new teaching, but it was a reaffirmation that for the Catholic Church and for the Christian perspective, we have to look to what is God's plan in every situation, and especially with the intimacy of a man and woman and what should be a marriage between a man and a woman for life, open to life, that simple phrase, open to life, addresses the issue of contraception, and that has always been the teaching of the Church. I agree with you, Your Excellency, but let me propose something else. Uh, you know, I think we're at a point where we have a crisis of catechesis, and there's a lot of people out there who will uh, take a statement uh, said by the Pontifical Academy for Life as something authoritative, and then they'll they'll be in a position where you know, they might think contraception is okay. Practically speaking, if they did repeal or, or do something to damage the reputation of humana vitae, uh, practically speaking, are these people going to be culpable? And what should people actually hold to at that, at that point? Well, um, ultimately, Joe, they have to, to hold to the truth and to be very careful about that. Going back to what Pope Francis said, if it's if it's going in, if it's reversing direction, if it's changing something, I would encourage you know the the individual Catholic can't say, well, the Pontifical Academy said it's okay, so I got to get a, get a free card here. Um, we all have to look at the truth and do our best to to live up to it. We can't point to really anyone else and. So I would just encourage people, the culpability question, I mean, that's always ultimately between that person and God, but we, I would caution people to be very careful, especially, it's interesting, Joe, just in my observation, with all the controversies that whirl around now and 20 years ago and 50 years ago, it, it always seems that even going back 500 years with the Protestant Reformation, um, many times when things are changed, it's not getting more challenging. It's not saying we're going to embrace the, the life of Christ even more deeply. It's getting easier. It's, it's kind of relaxing. And I think I would encourage just the, the average Joe, which I'm an average Joe, uh, <laughs> that's just trying to do their best to put up a caution line anytime. Something comes out that's changing things, 
and it's making it easier. If it's making it easier, I think we need to look to Christ, to the cross and the passion that he suffered. Um, following him is not easy. And if it's getting easier, that's a, at least a, a yellow caution light to say, maybe I should be very slow to change my way of living and, and what I believe is true. Uh, if, if this new teaching is making things easier, I would put up a caution light. Your Excellency, uh, my little brother, he actually goes to school in your diocese over at Stephen F. Austin. And he was uh, just at the at your cathedral for the Latin Mass there, and he was blown away. He told me he was he's going to start trying to drive all the way out from Nacogdoches to Tyler to come to Mass there. And it just made me think of the fact that, you know, when Benedict XVI wrote Samorum Pontificum, he said, what earlier generation held as sacred remains sacred and great for us, too, and cannot be all of a sudden entirely forbidden or even considered harmful. And obviously here he's talking about the liturgy, but I think this also applies to the entire tradition of the church, whether it be the teaching on contraception or any number of other things that may come up in different situations. And I think this, and I want you to get your comments on this, what is it about the tradition of the church that attracts young people and including, because people automatically think tradition, okay, we're referring to the Latin mass, but it also it's the tradition of the church, the teachings of the church. What, what the modern people would say is, oh, we need to allow people to have contraception. It'll draw more Catholics in. The young people will be more likely to come in. But we've seen the opposite. Why is it that these hard teachings that the church demands of us actually draws in more young people and draws in more faithful? Well, really, Joe, I think that gets to the very basic reality that our faith is about following a real person, Jesus Christ, who lived for 33 years in the first century in what we now call the Holy Land. Um, he lived and died and rose. That is our faith. Jesus Christ, a real human being. Um, and I think that the people like your brother are discovering him more deeply in some of these traditions and like you said, it's all tradition. It's not some, you know, a few things here and there, but the traditions of all the teachings of the church, ministry to the poor, um, the great work that's done there, the everything that the church has done, the, the traditions of the church really come back to the, the great saints that have done their best to conform their lives to Christ. That is... He is the, the center of the church. He's the heart of the church. And I always urge people to, to come closer to his sacred heart. I think that's what's happening with your brother. He may not put it in those terms, but what he's seeing is the mystery and the depth of encountering Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God. And Jesus Christ doesn't change from, he's not, a, you know, some sort of a, phantasm that changes from this to that. He's a real flesh and blood human being that is also God's eternal divine son, the great mystery of Jesus that we can never fathom. But I think that's who people are attracted to, not so much what, but they are attracted to the person of Jesus Christ, that they see aspects of his face in the Eucharist, in the teachings of the church, and and any manifestation that really brings us into the depth of the mystery of Emmanuel, God with us. So to me, that's the answer. And that's why we have mm -hmm. to continue to support all the people that are coming to a deeper faith mm -hmm. in whatever avenues. If they're coming closer to Christ, it's the church's job to support that and for all of us to seek to live Christ more deeply. Amen. We're down to just uh, seconds with Bishop Joseph Strickland. Uh, Bishop, what do you think the chances are that His Holiness Pope Francis would go along with this and seemingly allow contraception uh, in the church? Really, I, I don't think it's likely. Um, there have been, you know, discussions of things. I think it may be left um, somewhat confusing, but um, I don't foresee, I, I hope not, uh, any clear 
uh, teaching that reverses uh, humanae vitae or the church's teaching on contraception. Um, but I think probably some confusion and lack of clarity is what we will probably be with for quite some time. All right. Praise be to God. We're out of time. But Bishop Joseph Strickland, Bishop of Tyler uh, in Texas, God bless you. God love you, Bishop. Thank you for your time today. We're so very grateful to you. Thanks, Joe. God bless. God bless you. Have a great day, Bishop. That is going to do it for hour number one. If you can join us in the second hour, Brent Haynes, attorney, Catholic speaker, and activist, is going to be our guest. We're going to catch up on that uh, the fallout of the Trump raid in Mar-a-Lago from the FBI. Uh, cooler heads must prevail, according to Donald Trump. We'll get that in the latest, plus a lot more, and fear and trembling all coming up next. We'll see you there. God bless you.